guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you visiting our channel again today. If you are new to our channel, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrifted found items and we share a vision of how we make these items over and we get them to ready to resell. And we sell here locally. We have a couple retail booths and a local antique mall. So today's video is a mirror flip. One thing that I see a lot in thrift stores are mirrors. And once I paint them up, clean them up, get the stickers off them, put new hangers on them, they sell really well. Just basic white, basic black. So if you see a mirror out there and it is large and it is in good shape, pick it up, change it up, get it painted and flip it. So anyways, today's video, I'm gonna share the process of how I paint the mirrors up, what I'm looking for in a mirror. And then I uh, do have a few mirrors that, the, that I'm throwing in there that I'm gonna try some of the IOD transfers on. Why not? Hey, it's still a mirror, it's still reflective, and it'll give it a little bit of decor. So stay tuned to what I do to mirrors. So I've actually had these four pane mirrors in my stash for a little bit and I used to pick them up they used to sell really well but I've had one in for the booth for a while now that has just kind of been sitting there and actually I've lowered the price so I thought I am doing mirrors I am almost I'm pretty much out of mirrors in the booth so I have an idea of what I can try on these now this one, oh yes please, when I saw this when I was thrifting, I love making these over. For some reason, they're always somehow a little bit on the brokenness side, but we can usually always re-glue that so I'm not worried. Now when I'm looking for mirror, this one in the black is the perfect one. It's got bevel, it's got the detail that I'm looking for, and on the other one, I love that frame on that one. Even though it's not beveled, the price was just right. So absolutely love these kind of finds. And especially on this one, this one's big. It's in great condition. It's got that beveled glass, that beveled mirror, and it's got all that awesome detail around it. Now when I saw this beast, oh my gosh, I was in love from the moment I saw this mirror. Look at that frame on her. Oh my goodness. Just absolutely love all that detail. I might have impatiently was waiting for a lady to move away from it in the thrift store. I remember the story well. She was actually looking at the canvas and I thought she was going to want this mirror. So since it's so hard to film mirrors without you seeing my reflection all the time, and let's focus in on, on these beautiful mirrors, I use contact paper that I've thrifted, I put it on the mirror glass, and then on the other piece is the other part of the contact paper, not to waste, and that I just tape on. That way I'm going to be spraying these mirrors with some black spray paint, so I want to make sure that that glass is good and protected. Of course the option is if I can remove the mirror, I would love to do that. <laughs> then the only one that I could is this coat rack one. I'm just going to set that off to the side and yeah, I'll deal with that price tag later, all you regular <laughs> viewers out there. And now I'm going to go through and remove all those little hooks that are on the front of this. So I chose to tape off the backs of all these mirrors whether it's just be the edges or like this one because the inside is gone and then there was holes through there. I just used general or general tape to tape off the back side. That way I have a nice clean back side. Now that I've got that prep done, I'm going to go in with some super clean and some hot water and just get all these frames wiped down, get any grime, grease, anything that's left behind that will prevent my paint from sticking. And I like to do this after I tape off, just in case there's any water that pulled up that will prevent my tape or my contact paper from sticking on the glass. It's easier for me to um, wipe off the um, paper than it is to try to stick tape on something that might be a little bit damp or go get underneath that frame in the glass. 
course, I was working on this side, uh, this side of this frame. The back was in good condition and the edges, not so much, but I, when I, was, I was cleaning it and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like a belly button in there. Look at all that lint. I ended up getting the air compressor and blowing it out. It was really hard to get it all out. So now structurally, this coat rack hall tree mirror was in good shape. It just for some reason had shifted. It had some crackage. This one, this brace right here was broken off, but I had that back tape. So I'm holding it together with all that tape. Little did I know when I was doing that back, I thought it was just cracked. So Chris is just going in with some star bond, some CA glue, and just gluing that back together. And the tape is acting like a clamp. And so once he puts that glue on there and then puts the dryer in 15 seconds, it should be good to go. For these other cracks that are they're just cracks, but I don't know why, but they are. So he's just going in with some of this spackling, the one that turns, that's pink, that turns white, just to fill in that crack. There's a couple of them actually, and then where he glued to make sure that it's a nice smooth finish. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, my gosh, that's a lot of prep just for mirrors, but I think it's well worth the time. So here's why I took all that time on that prep, because on my undercoat of black, I want to be able to use the Rust-Oleum spray paint. A lot of these frames have a lot of texture to them. I don't want to have to try to get in there with a brush and um, get too much paint build up. And that way, paint, taping off that underneath too, I'm also protecting that from the overspray of the spray paint. So I'm going in on each one of these frames and everybody's getting an undercoat of black. For this one, I just decided, you know what, it's a little bit of a hot mess back here. So uh, just to make it even, I'm just going to spray paint the whole back side black. So I know you're all going to say, really Yvonne, it's already black, just paint it white. But there's just something different. It This has already been a repainted piece. I, sometimes I need to show the detail of a piece a little bit more. So this piece is probably was a goldy brass before, and now I'm painting another color over it. And I know that mine's going to stick. So now here, here's a little closer view. So that's not the color I want coming through when I go to distress this detail. So that's why I'm repainting it black. And then here again, you're thinking, well, this is already white, so just paint it white. Well, we like to distress our pieces, so when we go to sand the edges, we like that black to show through. And then one, the black is a great base. It covers where we have glued or fixed. It just covers in one coat coverage there. And then when we go to do the white, it just helps that white grab on. Now, before painting these four pane window mirrors, I'm gonna put a couple coats of shellac. That wood is not sealed in, it is really raw. So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna paint them black, I'm gonna paint them white, and then it's going to bleed through. So either way, I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with a couple coats of shellac. That will prevent that bleed through where that stain that's on there bleeds through all the way through. Even though you put black on over it, it still goes all the way through with that white and yellows your white. So this beast, oh, that was a heavy one to get in here going, don't drop it, don't drop it. This this mirror is heavy, you guys. That frame and all this wood is, a, oh my gosh, this is just a beautiful mirror. But yes, I definitely need to get this cleaned up. Now, after that black dries, I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with some Rust-Oleum and clear coat in the mat. Now, what this is going to do is going to be a finished coat for some of the backs of these, but then it's also going to seal that black in. So when I go to paint it white, that black is going to stay. It's not going to mix with the white and make a monkey gray mess. 
And after I added that two coats of shellac to these, now I can get their undercoat of black sprayed on them. Now I have to flip some of these mirrors over and now start spraying the <laughs> front of it. So for this one, after I spray it, I am not going to move it. I'm going to let the black dry in our spray room. After that black's dried and I did seal the fronts in again with the Rust-Oleum and the clear mat, I'm going in and I'm using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint, the white linen. I absolutely love this product. I love using it for the way that I like to distress pieces. So I'm just straight on painting it right on using a, I think I got the Annie Sloan paintbrush that I'm using. I, I need a lot of coverage. I need a lot of paint in my brush to get into these details. Now, especially for this first coat where I want to get a lot of that detail, all those little grooves. There's something different about getting the paint in the grooves and distressing the pieces than just taking a dry brush and letting the dry brush of the paint. It just a whatever look you're going for, but I like to get the paint in there and then take paint off. Now using such a big brush on these frightened pieces, I gotta be a little bit careful to not get that pooling up in those corners. So to save myself time and anguish, whew, I'm not going to, I'm going to be very gingerly when it comes to those holes that go all the way through on the bottom. I painted that back black, I sealed it in, and as long as I don't get a whole bunch of paint on my brush, I should not have any drips or runs or just be really careful. But I definitely needed to use this big brush to get in all this beautiful detail. Now, as I move on to the second coat, some of these mirrors, I'll be able to use this big brush still to get in that detail. There's not a lot of smooth areas, but some of them I'm going to have to go in with a smaller brush because the smoother they are, this seems to leave a little bit of streaks. I'm trying not to water this down. I think that I'd already added water to this can off of, I used it in the sprayer, so it's a little bit runnier. Um, so I don't think this is the full spray strength paint that I'm using. Now after I let it achieve the color that I was looking for, that it wasn't streaky, now I'm going in and I am water distressing this paint. And oh, this is so satisfying. I'm just taking a wet wipe. I have a bucket of water so I can rinse it out. And I'm just making sure that I get that little wet wipe in in a ball because wherever it lays on this paint it will take the paint off so i have the little wet wipe i have a dry paper towel and as i'm rubbing the detail areas to show that black that i spent the time sealing in and painting on that i'm just going in and just popping that little bit of detail but i will tell you from learning that if i get an area that i don't like the way it distressed i just put paint back on it Oh, I knew this beast of a frame was going to be, whew, this was going to take a lot of work, but it was going to be a well worth it. Just all that detail and all this molding on this piece. Oh my gosh. So, yep, same thing. I have that wet wipe and I have the water bucket next to me so I can keep rinsing it off that way. When you're wiping it off, you kind of it kind of gives a gray hue, and then when I dry it off with that paper towel, then I I'm taking I'm making more of the black show. Now, when it comes to these flatter pieces that don't have any detail, I'm going in with some sandpaper, just some 220 sandpaper, and I'm sanding those edges. I don't want to water distress these pieces because what will happen is when I'm trying to just do the edges, I'm going to end up laying it on top of that flat surface and taking paint off where I don't want it. So I'm already, I was already in the motion of painting all these with the same paint. 
I could have painted with a different, but why use two different paints when you're all painting them all white when you have a grouping together? So this is how I'm distressing these pieces. And then I'll take the sandpaper on that flat edge and make sure that it's nice and smooth. After I, I let that dry where I water distress it, I don't want to spray a sealer over it until after I'm finished. So I'm going to go in with the Rust-Oleum and Clear Coat in matte finish and seal all this chalk paint in. And then after that Rust-Oleum Clear Coat dries, I'm going to go in with some of this very thin finishing wax and just give it a nice waxing, just one more level of protection on this white paint. And after I get it all waxed up, I. I like to remove my paper after I wax, that way I don't get any wax, because sometimes that wax doesn't come off the glass as easy. So I'm trying to save myself some work by tape doing all this taping. So now I can have the reveal of seeing how much I need to clean off of the mirrors. There's always that little edge. It's never perfect, it's never a perfect seal, but at least I have minimal cleanup. So now I get to peel all this tape and that contact paper off. And after getting all that tape removed, I go along with just a little bit of sandpaper. And there's always that hard, crusty edge where the paint has dried where it meets the tape. So I just take a little bit of sandpaper and take that off. So or if you are new to my channel, oh my gosh, when it comes to glass cleaning, mirror cleaning, my favorite go-to is the Norwex cloths. I do not sell them. I've used them for decades. So it's an Enviro cloth that you get wet and you just, it's got aluminum in it, I guess. I don't know the whole theory. I just know that I love them and I highly suggest them. And I'll have the link, the Amazon link down below. So if, in case you are interested in them. And so then, and then it has the dry cloth that you, um, leave streak free oh my gosh i just love the way that it cleans the glass and leaves those mirrors i just cannot highly recommend i have so many sets of these oh i love them so after getting that glass all cleaned up i could get this put back together and uh, there's always that prayer don't grab the glass don't grab the glass you know <laughs> don't drop that mirror so the little bit of stress but then when i was putting the very back on i guess when i was taking flipping the tabs over to remove the mirror i did not realize that some of the little i'm gonna call them cheesy tabs because they are because they as soon as i started to bend them back they were breaking off so we're gonna have to think of another option to make sure that this mirror stays in place see how it just broke off so back out the glass goes with a prayer that I didn't drop it again. So I'm taking all these tabs out so then we can replace these. There's little, um, we do a lot of glass replacement on hutches and furniture pieces along with mirrors themselves. So we have, you can buy this bulk supplies of these little tabbies that are pretty, pretty flush and they just screw in so they will be enough to hold this in place a lot better than those little flimsy pieces that as soon as i touched it it broke right off so yep now i got some more mirrors to clean so i'm just going in with those norwex cloths and these are that little fun little squares to get to clean but it's minimal and i do take a little bit of the scraper very gingerly i don't want to scrape that glass and remove any of that buildup. So now I'm excited to try transfers on these. I thought, you know what, I have these in my hoard. I purchased them, I need to reuse them. So I had went to Birds Gotta Fly Vintage, if you did not see that video, and they had all these beautiful IOD transfers. And I absolutely love ferns, I'm a big fan of ferns. And the nice thing is that this is a huge page that's a smaller mirror and I can just cut away some of the pieces and parts of the fern leaves that I want to add to this mirror. Now for me, my vision is that the fern leaf just goes on the mirror part, that it does not go on the wooden part. So I have to kind of play around a little bit, figure out how I'm going to cut this off, where it's going to land. So there's just a little bit of play, placement playing with this. So I have to figure out where the stem, so the stem is kind of underneath the frame part, and then I can bend this over a little bit and then get my fingernail in there to give it a crease and then take my X-Acto knife to cut off the edge. So 
So now as I move that other half of the fern up into the mirror, I'm looking for the stem. I'm trying to eyeball, trying to do as best as my ability, that perfectly imperfect of crafting, and trying to get it in where it looks like it is all one piece. So I want the mirror to be able to hang either way, vertical, horizontal, whichever way. So I don't really necessarily want them to come out of the corners of what my thinking is. So just depending on this, it gives the buyer a little bit more options of how to hang it in the space that they have available. So that's why I'm kind of coming off that side, but I have to be careful because my tip here and the other fern are kind of matching up with each other. So I don't want it to stick because yes, it will stick. We clean that glass really well. So now I just, going to take my Rees Design Rubber. It's a little thing that helps you transfer and it's the, the transfer stick really well to these mirrors. I will, I will let you know that. So if you accidentally touch, it may be stuck before you want to. So very gingerly when you're trying to stick these onto glass. So I'm just making sure that I have all those little pieces and parts of those tips of the ferns adhere before removing the paint, the transfer tape very gingerly. I switched over to the one that came with the transfer only because I couldn't fit the other one in the space provided. <laughs> so it'll be the same thing in all four spaces. I just keep rubbing, making sure that I get all those little tips transferred down onto the glass. Now for my next mirror, I'm going to switch over to this little booklet. It has eight different pages in it, eight different florals and greenery, and I'm eyeballing these circles. I think, oh, how cute would that be as a little accent above somebody's on their wall, above a shelf, just a little something, something to add to this mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and cut around the whole, the both of those circles. I'm going to have both of those circles but I don't want the flowers in the middle. Of course, I have to be picky, but so I'm gonna end up cutting those out and using those for a later project. So I think that I'm trying, I'm like, okay, how am I going to achieve that this is going to, so I think I just cut it in half and cut it in another quarter. So quarter this right up, just follow, it has a nice grid pattern on there. So I know where I need to cut. So I'll just follow that line. And as long as I don't get it stuck down early, I think just take that paper off and just butt it right up to the, the frames and it should match up. It has a nice matching pattern there that so if you're a little bit off, it doesn't, you can't really tell it because of the greenery and the flowers. And so now I'm just taking, I, because this is a smaller transfer, I'm just taking the tool that came with this transfer from the IOD. Now each transfer that you buy, it has this rubbing tool with it. You don't, it's a choice if you wanna buy a separate rubbing tool. So my curiosity was spiked. I saw all my fingerprints on here. I know that I can't put wax on it to seal it. I can't spray it to seal it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be selling this. So I'm just going to wet it down and see what it does if it comes on or off or not. And nope, look at it's on there. I used the Enviro cloth that was wet and then I dried it off with the glass cleaning cloth. So I'm good to sell. So our last step as into finishing up these mirrors is to put a good hanging system on them, a nice strong hanging system. And for mirrors, we like to give an option if, if it can, um, to be able to hang it two different ways. I think that just helps people out that are buying them. We get these eyelet hooks off of Amazon, a whole bunch for very reasonable. And then this is fencing wire, but it's nice and strong.
So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of my mirrors? I know on my channel I have a lot of mirrors. I love sharing mirrors with you all. I love sharing the vision. I think I'm kind of getting mirrors down pat of what I'm looking for, the beveled, the detail, but don't ever disregard just a plain mirror. Mirrors are expensive when you go into stores and they're expensive when you go into Hobby Lobby, even at 50% off. So if you can thrift them low enough and put a little bit of work into them, clean them up, get them a fresh coat of paint and resell them, resell them however you want. If you want to sell them on Marketplace, you have a booth, you have a craft fair. Hey, I highly suggest picking up mirrors to resell. So, and what did you think of the IOG transfers? I thought I'm gonna keep it simple. I don't know how they're gonna sell. I've never really done a transfer on a mirror. So why don't we just sneak into it a little bit on something that did sell, then it didn't sell, or it's just sitting, waiting for that right person to come in the booth. So put a little transfer on it, see how that goes. So well, I'll try to keep you guys posted on how those sold. So thank you for so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you were checking out this content for the first time, just hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.